Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at reaction profiles in a practice video. I'm going to do a quick run through of what reaction profiles are and then I'll give you some practice questions to try. Here we have a typical reaction profile diagram. Across the x-axis you have the reaction progress and on the y-axis you have the potential energy of the reaction. So here we're going from reactants on the left to products on the right. I'm going to label this diagram with what this shows. Here we have the reactants and here we have the products. The energy required for the reaction to take place is called the activation energy and is this part here for the forward reaction or would be from the products to the top for the reverse reaction. The difference in energy between the reactants and the products is the enthalpy. To work out the enthalpy, we always take the products minus the reactants. If you were going to do the reverse reaction, then it would have to be the reactants minus the products um, for the traditional left to right of um, a reaction. At the very top, at this part here, we have the activated complex. The activated complex is an unstable arrangement of atoms which is found uh, when we have had the minimum energy required for the colliding particles um, within the reaction. Here we can see two different types of reaction profiles. This first one here is for an exothermic reaction. This is where energy is released. So we have delta H is a negative value. So you can see here that the products enthalpy is lower than the reactants. So when we do products minus reactants, then we get a negative value. This one here represents an endothermic reaction. This being a reaction in which energy is taken in from the surroundings. So we get a positive value. So here the products have a higher value than the reactants. So when we do products minus reactants, you get a positive value. If you add a catalyst to the reaction, then you give a lower energy pathway for the reaction to happen. This means that you reduce the activation energy, which can be seen here on this diagram. Related to reaction profiles is the kinetic energy diagram. So here we can see a basic kinetic energy diagram where we have the kinetic energy increasing across the x-axis and the number of particles on the y-axis. You get this curve here where a very small number of particles will have a low kinetic energy and a small number of particles will have a large kinetic energy and then the majority will be here in the middle. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of all of the particles. So if we have here this as a medium temperature, if we were to increase the temperature, then the average kinetic energy will also increase. So when we draw the curve, we move the peak of the curve over to the right and it will be lower down. So that will be for a hotter temperature. And then if we cool it down, then your average kinetic energy here will decrease. So you'll move the peak of the curve to the left and it will be higher up. So here we have T1, which is going to be less than T2, which is less than T3. Onto this diagram, we can also put in activation energy. So if we put in activation energy here, so we can see that everything in here, so this is our original curve. These are the particles which would have enough energy to react in the original curve. When we then heat it up, we then get all these molecules or particles here, which are able to react. And for the colder one, it is only these particles here in the blue which could react. If we were then to add in a catalyst, we would lower that activation energy. So this would be activation energy with a catalyst. And you can see that we then increase the number of particles in all regions that can react. Pause the video now and try this question. For part A, we're calculating the activation energy for the forward reaction. So that is the energy from here up to the very top here. So we have 
120 at the top and 80. So if we do 120 minus 80, the activation energy is going to be 40 kilojoules per mole. The activation energy for the reverse reaction is from here to the top of the hill. So we will have 120 minus the 20 for the products there. So that will be 100 kilojoules per mole. The delta H will be the same numerical value, but will be positive for one reaction and negative for the other. So for the forward reaction, it is going to be the products minus the reactants. So that will be 20 minus 80. So that will be negative 60. And then for the reverse reaction, it will be 80 minus 20. So it will be plus 60. So is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? So when you're asked that, it's generally for the forward reaction. So for the forward reaction, it would be exothermic. Pause the video now and try this question. For this question, we're trying to find which of these is an exothermic reaction which could take place at room temperature. So let's start with the exothermic reaction. For this, the enthalpy of your products needs to be lower than the enthalpy of your reactants. So we can eliminate these two here. And if it's going to take place at room temperature, room temperature is not very hot, so this means that the particles will not have that great a kinetic energy, so the activation energy needs to be low, which means that this one could take place at room temperature because it has a lower activation energy. Pause the video now and try this question. In this question, we want to draw a reaction profile um, and we need the delta H for the forward reaction to be minus 20, uh, the activation energy for the forward reaction to be 100 and the reactant enthalpy is at 40. So we'll start here with the scale going up in 20s. Your reactant enthalpy is at 40, so we can put that in here. We have an activation energy of 100, so we're going to go up to 140 for the activation energy. And then you have a delta H for the forward reaction of minus 20, which means that we need to come down to 20 for the products. So we can have 20 minus 40 to be minus 20. Pause the video now and try this question. For this question, is this endo or exothermic? We need to look at our reactants and products. You can see here that our products have a greater energy than the reactants. This means that when you do products minus reactants, you'll get a positive value, and therefore this will be an endothermic reaction. We need to add in a line to show the effect of adding a catalyst. When we add a catalyst, we lower the activation energy, so the height of the hill will be smaller. Add a star where the activated complex forms. The activated complex always forms at the top of the activation energy. Pause the video now and try this question. For this question, we're drawing a reaction profile for an activation energy for the forward reaction of 120, for the reverse reaction, an activation energy of 80, and a reactant enthalpy of 50. First thing we'll do is to put in a scale here. We'll start by putting in the reactant enthalpy, which is at 50, so your reactants are here. We have an activation energy for the forward reaction of 120, so we need to go up to 170 for the top. And then your reverse activation energy is 80. So if we have 120 from here to here, from here down needs to be 80. So if we're at 170, uh, we're going to take off 80. So that will take us down to 90, which will be about here. Pause the video now and try this question. We have the activation energy for the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. And then we also have the activation energy for the catalyzed forward reaction. So add in another curve just to help you visualize what's happening. So this one is now 40 which means that this part here would be 30. So we've reduced the reverse reaction by 30 as well. So the catalyzed activation energy for the reverse reaction is 100. Pause the video and try this question. 
Here we're just identifying what the correct statements are. So as the temperature increases from T1 to T2, what happens to the activation energy? Does it increase, decrease, or stay the same? So the activation energy will stay the same, but the number of successful collisions will increase. Pause the video now and try this question. For the first part of the question, we're adding a line to show the effect of decreasing the temperature. So the temperature, when it's decreased, will move the line to the left but it will also be higher up than the original line. And we're also going to add a line to show the effect of adding a catalyst. So that will lower the activation energy. So this will be your activation energy with a catalyst. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry where you can have updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.